Alright gang, welcome back to Dragon Ball Z Budokai playthrough part 2. In the first part, if you weren't here, we talked over some Raditz storyline and where I think he belongs in the storyline. And we also slightly touched bases on how we actually feel about Gohan. So if you missed that, please be sure to go and check that out so you know exactly what we got going on in this new part. So, in the last part we defeated Raditz, we got killed, and now we're in the afterlife, which is kind of where the story hits filler if you're watching the actual show. We're gonna go see King Kai and learn some transformation moves. Well, the King Kai Fist to be more, I think you start with times two. And it's actually really important to learn how to use transformations in this game because if you learn how to use them properly You can guard crash people very easily which sets up for easy combos So that's gonna be the most important thing to learn in this episode. I'll be talking about that once we get it But anyway as I was trying to say in the last episode the best way to get capsules in this game is through the world tournament and the way you're gonna do that is you are going to pick a character like Frieza or Cell, which is the ones I highly recommend, and use Punch, Punch, Kick, Kick, Kick. If you're playing on an Xbox controller, that is X, X, Y, Y, Y. You, if you do that near the edge of the ring, you will instantly knock them out of the ring, and you can abuse this to no end, especially if you use charged up knockup moves that guarantee you're going to get the combo off. If you juggle them a few times, it increases your kick distance. So if you hit them up twice with left and right bumper on an Xbox controller, hold it down, get the knockup, you will hit them up twice. And when they're starting to fall, when you catch them with the kick, if you're anywhere even remotely near the edge of the ring, you will send them flying. Uh, that is the best way to get castles in this game. And I will be demonstrating that in a later video. In fact, I'll have an annotation here for when that video goes up so you can just jump right to that and I'll show you so uh, so we got King Kai Fist we learned uh, what we could from King Kai and we're here to fight Nappa which by the way I learned gets his clothes blown off by a Misenko because I always kind of wondered why Nappa was naked like I just couldn't understand like why he was why he had his clothes blown off so there's the guard crash see that's what the best use is for transformations, especially if your character has a finishing move that requires you to catch them off guard, because there are some in this game that provide their own knockups for their moves. Like Goku's, Goku's uh, instant transmission, Kamehameha, is one of the strongest moves in the game because it has its own built-in knockup. So if the combo's going through smoothly, you know you're gonna hit the combo finish and get the ultra move off. However, people like Cell and the Spirit Bomb can be countered if you're not careful with how you input the command. The Big Bang attack's kind of the same way, but the Final Flash is one of the easiest moves to hit in the game. So. If you experiment around, you'll learn that there are some super moves that aren't created equal because some of them come with built-in knockup in the combo used to use it, which makes it a million times easier to hit. <coughs> My apologies there. So we got Nappa after defeating him, which is good. You want to unlock as many characters as you can. And the best way to do that is to play through the storyline. Imagine that. Super duel. Now we're on to fight the Vegeta. Like I said, this is kind of like the greatest hits collection of Dragon Ball Z. They skip a lot of the filler, and you kind of just get all of the action, which is good. That's the way it should be. Hey, thanks. But I don't expect a fair fight. It doesn't seem like your style. Ooh, that's a sick burn. <laughs> there. I've let you speak your At least they kept again, the voice Joey. actors the same. I think that changes in Budokai 3 in the HD version. But I'm not entirely certain. I think that's exactly what happens, actually. They go to the Kai voices, which makes it very, very awkward to listen to. 
So in this fight, we get the continuous Kamehameha, which is good. That's the move that we want. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna try to show it off. See, like the, the continuous Kamehameha is one that can be blocked very easily as well. And I'll show you what I mean. See, you can block that final hit. Where there are some finishers in the game that make that impossible to block because you'll be in the air if the combo goes through, which means it's unblockable unless you just don't get hit with the startup to begin with. As you can tell, we are teeing off on Vegeta because, oh, he's done. Let's finish him off with a key blast. What do you guys think? Here we go, right here. Vader. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. There it is. The ultimate disrespect. We got him. It's so like I was saying, there's, you can use the guard to set up for your finishers, which is kind of like an advanced thing you can do. You can juggle enemies in the air for a few couple extra seconds with two well-timed uh, back and left or right bumper if you're playing the Xbox 360. I'm assuming you're playing the HD version when I make these comments, so... Just remember that in the PS2, it's R1, and on the GameCube, I believe it's the right bumper that is your charge-up attack, which is good because it makes it easy to remember. So basically, right bumper on any game console with the back direction will knock them up, and you can catch them with a quick one before they land and still get enough off to hit a 5-hit combo, a 4-hit for your energy attack, which will clip them it won't actually go all the way through so you can always do that that's one of the best ways to land moves in this game is to hit the, the initial knock up and then go for your combo because you'll always clip them with the energy attack and it does extra damage because you got the knock up built into it and you can also throw people off when you're playing versus with charged up attacks because if they start to begin to think that you're going to charge up every attack, you can cut the charge off short and knock them up a lot faster because they'll be expecting the full charge. And the best way in this game to win close matchups is to know when the best time is to swing when an enemy is trying to hit you with a charge up to knock you up or to break your guard. And if you can time those right, you can dominate people because they'll be trying to guard break you when you're guarding and then you interrupt their charge with a combo and then you're catching them with quick to very exaggerated knockups and you can just run the table on them. That's my best advice is to master the left or yeah it's the back and the right bumper knockup maneuver which the best way to do that is to turn the computer on very hard because they will do nothing but guard and you will learn very quickly how to time those with people's reactions so you get the best possible combos off at all times so i've been talking a lot about the game i apologize this is kind of just to give people who haven't played the game before some insight into the game how it operates and what are some cool tips and tricks that you can use to win one-on-ones with people who have played fighting games before because this game has a very intricate combat system it's simple but i do believe it has some depth to it it may not be like street fighter level or mortal kombat level but for a fun pick me up fighting game it is a very very fun combat system and if you get capsules and stack them properly it can be one of the most broken fighting games in the entire world probably because what you can do is you can take a character like vegeta stack three final flash capsules on him and his final flash will do half health damage and final flash is one of those moves that has a built-in knockup so you're guaranteed to hit it if the combo goes through so we are gonna have to fight vegeta with gohan which is disappointing because gohan is awful reason for that the masenko combo is blockable like i've been talking about the Masenko combo can be interrupted and it can be blocked as it's going through, which makes it very hard to get it off. Whereas the Kamehameha will always go through no matter what, if you're hitting the combo properly. That's what I'm always assuming when you're talking about when you're talking about the uh, Masenko versus the Kamehameha. Also, the input 
for the Misenko is not something that is very easily remembered unless you play a ton of Gohan. So if you ever forget how to use the move, you won't ever use it. Because every other move in the game goes off a punch, 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 punch energy kind of setup, whereas the Misenko runs off of a kick, kick, over kick, kick energy, which is very odd. I think there's only two other moves. Bomber DX is hard to hit, Hell Zone or a Light Grenade is hard to hit, and I think Justice Kick is the other one that runs off a very weird system. They tried to mix it up, which is kind of cool, but I don't know. I think that they should have kept everybody's punch, 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 energy, four punches and energy. Sorry, I'll just say that instead of saying that. Four, four punches and energy should have been the universal one. And I get that Gohan gets two of them, but... I don't know why they had to make it kick, kick, over kick, kick energy when they could have just made a kick, 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 kick energy for his second energy tire, and then everybody would have known how to use it. Vegeta summons his spaceship, hoping to make a hasty retreat. His plan: escape Earth and live. Vegeta is my favorite character in the whole show. Really appreciate this guy. He goes through the biggest character transformation in the entire show. That is very fun to watch. And I love how his character develops. Wow, that looks really weird. It's over, you fool. It's not over yet. No. Wait. Spare him so he can come back and kill everybody. Let Vegeta go. Which, by the way, Vegeta never actually kills anybody. But I want to challenge him which absolutely blows my mind. Because when you were kids, you didn't think of that. But Nappa did all the damage. Vegeta just kind of fought Goku and called it a day. And much like Vegeta's gonna call it a day, we're gonna call it a day here. So I appreciate you guys checking out the video. Uh, everything's a work in progress. I'm getting my feet under me. So just be sure to stay tuned for more. I am going to be talking about who I believe is the best character in the game in the next episode. So be sure to check that out. And I'll also be going into how I feel about the Frieza saga, or the Namek saga, because that will be coming up. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see you guys in the next episode. I'll let the preview play us out. We've heard that there's another set of Dragon Balls on a planet called Namek. We're going to try to use them to wish our dead friends back to life. Bulma and the others have gone on ahead to search. All of you, stay out of my way! Dragon Balls are as good as mine. I will be immortal! Next on Dragon Ball Z, let's go to Namek. See you there! What was that music?